Welcome to New Science Hub. We are going to talk about GLP today. What is GLP? It is a good laboratory practice. GLP is a part of GMP. The manufacturing activities of pharmaceuticals is totally supported by the good laboratory practices. Let us go in detail on how the good laboratory practices are complied with. Let us see the salient features of good laboratory practices. GLP consists of two major parts. One is the good documentation practices and the second one is good record keeping practices. Let us see how a good documentation practices can be achieved. The very important point here is each procedure or each test method should have a detailed procedure and it should be based on a guideline like a pharmacopoeia or any in-house test method. The specification should have a detailed, uh, all details of the uh, test parameters in that and with a reference to the test method and uh, the requirements for a pass fail conditions should be there. So, all the SOPs should have a detailed information that is extracted from the pharmacopoeia or any other thing should be there. Then when once you make the documentation, you have to follow exactly the procedures or test method written in the document and you have to exactly record do the record keeping of the information whatever you are generating. Now, in GLP there are three important points. One is good documentation practices. Number two is execution as per procedure. Number three is record. These are all the three important things you have to do. When you are talking about good documentation practice, it is very important that all the test methods should be conspicuously written in a format with test number, test description and the specification. And also there should be a reference to the test method that is being used. These are all the things that are required for good documentation practice. The procedure written should be in an imperative style in and in a mandatory style. You may refer Eudralex volume 4 part 1 section 4.4 .4 to get exact details on how a procedure is made, how work instruction is made, how general systems are made in that particular one. Then exactly you have to read those procedures, understand the procedures and execute exactly as per the procedure given and as per the procedure prescription. And whatever prescription is there, you have to record everything with honesty and sincerity. There should not be any data integrity issues on these things. The same GDP information can be obtained from ICHQ 7, section 6.6, .6, section 11 and section 12. You can also refer 21 CFR part 211 subpart I, section 2.211.160 to 170 and the subpart J 180 to 198. When we are writing a test procedure, it is very important to see that the all information that is referred in the pharmacopoeia should be captured in a nice fashion. The pharmacopoeia text are not user friendly. You have to make text in a nice fashion to meet your bench top requirements. So what you should do is you have to extract the information from that in an imperative style, in a mandatory style to suit your bench top working. So while making the STP test or test procedure, it is very important that to have some provision for writing the numerical numbers that are generated during the analysis. This is very important. Your, your pharmacopoeial monograph does not give this many details. It's only half page or three fourths of a page. But if you write the details in a big way, you will get at least half a dozen pages for, a, for each STP. You, there should be definitely a provision for recording all the data. Coming to the recording of information. Recording of information should not be done on 
any scrap paper or any loose paper or any uncontrolled papers. It is very important that all the registers that are used as books or as, as log books in uh, QC lab should be numbered and it should be issued by issuing authority generally it will be the QA department. So any papers that are used should be uh, written only in this information and nothing else. When doing analysis it is very important that you have to see that your equipment is totally qualified and calibrated. Let us see little bit more on qualification and calibration of your equipment. The qualification of the equipment include one the design qualification, two the installation qualification, three the operation qualification and the four the performance qualification. All these aspects have to be completed when you are using the equipment for routine use. The DQ tells about how the equipment is designed and it should be approved before going for installation qualification. When using the equipment in the laboratory, it is a basic requirement that your equipment should be qualified. How do we qualify? The first thing is design qualification. You have to select the suitable design that is used for your analysis. The next part of the qualification is installation qualification. This, talk, this talks about how the equipment is installed in the laboratory in a suitable environment. The third one is the operational qualification, whether or not it operates as designed, this, this will be checked here. And when one of these three things are done, a com complete analysis is done using a performance qualification. After, when once these things are done, these equipments are ready for usage in the lab. But it is very important that all these equipments have to be calibrated with a frequency as suggested by the vendor or as per your usage. No equipment should be used when it is out of calibration. Have, it is very important that whenever you are doing the analysis, the equipment should be in calibrated status. The calibration frequency may be depend, depends upon the usage pattern and the recommendation by the vendor. So if you are using more frequently, the calibration should be more. If you are using less frequently, the calibration may be less. But however, it is very important that without a calibration, the equipment should not be used. The data that is generated using a non-calibrated or out of calibration equipment will be suspicious for the results that is giving to it. It is also important to see that the while doing the qualification of the equipment, the chemist or the supervisor of the lab should be accompanied along with the vendor and he should see that he should also understand how the qualification is done and how the calibration is done. He is supposed to take all the procedures from the vendor also. When once the equipment is ready with qualification and calibration, it is very important to see that the chemist is trained. This is very, very important. Unless the person is trained, he will not be suitable for using in JLP. So the training should be done two ways. One is a verbal questioning. The person can be, uh, can be asked to read the procedure. And if he understands the procedure easy, and if it is a simple procedure, a verbal evaluation may be acceptable. But if it is a sophisticated equipment like HPLC, RGC, or UV, that kind of any sophisticated equipment, where sensitive uh, operations and sensitive controls are there, a coded sample may have to be given to that person. And that person should analyze that sample and give the results. Finally, when once the results are there, these results have to be compared with the original results. And if it passes, that means the person is qualified to do the job. Otherwise, he is not qualified to do the job. In this laboratory controls, it is very important to have the integrity in the data generated. There are some points to discuss on this. There is some, something like called Alcova principles. I'll explain what is Alcova. This is the basic principle for data integrity. Let us understand these words individually. While recording the data, it is important to see that you follow the Alcoa principles. Let us understand Alcoa, what is Alcoa? A-L-C-O-A. A in this is attributable. Attributable, that means who has done the analysis or who has done the operation. This is called attributable. 
It is the test, the test is attributed to the person who has done the analysis. L is legible. Legible means the numbers, whatever you are writing, it should be clear and it should be read, readable by all in a similar way. For example, you write like this. What is this number? Is it 2 or 3? Looks like 2, but maybe looking like 3. But this is not the right way. You would write 3 like 2 like this. This is very important. So this is called legible writing. It should be part of your alcova. Then C is contemporaneous. The meaning of contemporaneous is that means whenever the job is done or whenever the operation is done, it should be recorded immediately, not tomorrow or day after. It should be done immediately. This is the meaning of contemporaneous. Then the next word is original. Original means, again, you have to write on the QA approved or QA issued document straight. It's not acceptable if you are writing on a small piece of paper or on a rough paper and it is transcribed later to the original document. This is not an acceptable practice. This should be avoided. So this is called original. And more importantly, this is accurate. Accurate means you have to write the real value. You have to write the real value. Whatever value is getting, you have to get this. So this is very important for any person to know these things. When recording is made in, in your analytical records, it is very important to enter exactly in the spaces provided and with the exact numericals that are required to be entered in that. When entries are made, the recording should be done in the spaces provided with indelible ink. What is the meaning of indelible? Indelible means it should not be erased out. General understanding is that you have to use a pen. How can you use a uh, fountain pen? You should not use a fountain pen because even if some water or anything falls on that, it spreads out. So the practice should be to use a ballpoint pen so that the, the entry is clear and it cannot be erased out with a rubber, with an eraser. The very important point here to note is you should not use a pencil recording while doing the RGLP records. When entries are made, it should be written indelibly in the spaces provided on the record. If you want to correct a wrong entry in the record, strike out with a one single line, still the original number can be readable. Then write the new number with a signature, date, and reason for change. For example, you have, you have to write a value of 88. But by error, you have written as 38. Section 6.14 of ICH Q7 prescribes that you cut this, write number 88, put your signature here, and put a date as 17-7-2022. That this is the date. And you can say also entry error, because this is the coding for error. So you can, you can also say like that. But the, all these things should be a part of your detailed procedure on how document is handled and how document entry is made. This is very important. And it is also necessary that the data entry should be, should be indelible. The meaning of indelible is you have to use a ballpoint pen so that it cannot be erased out. You should never use a pencil. The pencil can be erased out very easily. So that shows the data integrity issue. While using the analytical methods, it is very important that all the methods are validated as per USP 1225 12, chapter. This is very, very important. You have to validate this uh, the analytical methods by using this USP chapter. Then only these things should be used in the uh, analytical routine analysis. But when you are using a pharmacopoeial methods already validated, you have to do a verification activity that is also referred in 1226 chapter of USP. This also you have to use when you are doing the verification activity. Verification activity is nothing but a limited validation of the method. That is you know, the suitability of that particular method within your lab. This is very important. This has to be done for each and every test that is, that is being practiced from pharmacopoeia to your routine lab. This you have to do first time, not always. When there is a failure in analytical work, you should never close that or with, you should never uh, hide that. There is a requirement to do a OOS. 
OIS means out of specification investigation. There are guidelines to investigate these things. There are two types of investigations that is phase one that is to rule out that there is no error or if there is an error in lab that should be corrected. So, the phase one is totally dependent on the laboratory investigation and phase two investigation is a complete investigation, a detailed investigation where the product data, production uh, uh, records and other things are also checked to confirm that there is a failure of the batch, then only any further action should be taken on the disposal of the product. Similarly, when there is a deviation in any of the procedures in your lab, there should be a procedure to handle the deviation controls deviation reporting. In this procedure, you have to describe what is the deviation and what are the reasons for that and how the deviation is handled, how it is investigated and how it is closed out to the satisfaction in a scientific way. This is very important. Another very important point here is when there are changes in the analytical procedures or in any uh, systems or any, any equipments are also there then there, there is a requirement to have a change control procedure, change control procedure. In this also, the change control procedure should be described in detail, what is the present system, what is the proposed change you are making, what is the impact on the analysis or on the other equipment and what are the results and the follow up action after the change that everything is good in this change. So, these are all very important points that should be taken care in the lab also. The next item in GLP is to have a good certificate of analysis. How a certificate of analysis should be? The certificate of analysis should have the details of the product. If any code is there, the code number also should be given. The unique batch number should be given. There should be a provision to have uh, manufacturing date. There should be a provision to have expiry date, the quantity, the date of release and finally, you should have all the tests, test one, uh, the, I mean the test number, what is the test, what is the acceptance criteria, what are the results. Then once everything is done in the certificate of analysis and if all results are within the, within the requirement, you can say the batch confirms and other as a person should sign that on that. The same information should be supplied to the vendor also, I mean the customer also, whoever takes our material, you have to give the certificate to them. Another very important point is the certificate of analysis. Certificate of analysis comes when the product is completely analyzed, when the data is available, all the data has to be checked, reviewed once again for its compliance and then jot down in the form of a certificate of analysis. The certificate of analysis contains the details of the product, name of the product, a code, uh, the batch number, the batch quantity, the date of release and sometimes you have to give the uh, storage conditions and packaging conditions also. In the certificate of analysis format, we have serial number, name of the test, specification and results obtained. So, when once all these things are jotted down, you have to review whether or not the uh, results are passing with the specification and if it passes, you tick off the confirms and it should be signed off by authorized persons. It is very important to see that only authorized persons are handling the certificate of analysis and the access controls for making the certificate of analysis also should be clearly mentioned in your system of preparing the certificate of analysis. One more important point for the GLP is to carry out stability studies. Stability studies are carried out to establish the shelf life of the product. There are guidelines like ICH Q1A R2 for carrying out the study and Q1E guide for evaluation of the shelf life. Based on the data from accelerated and long term data, the shelf life is assigned to the product. This is important to establish the shelf life of the product or expiry date of the product. Mostly the APIs are given a retest whereas the drug products are given expiry period. The difference between retest and expiry period is, retest period is when once the retest period is complete, it can be retested and if it passes to specification, it can be extended by another term. Whereas expiry date means 
Beyond that, the product is not supposed to be used. To sum up, all the discussions we made now on the GLP are very important and every, everything depends on the honesty and integrity of the people who are working in the lab. Because the manufacturing results and the manufacturing totally depends on the very heart of the QC. If the QC is strong, the manufacturing procedures will be good and the results obtained also good. So make sure that the integrity is maintained and you follow all GLP systems and procedures throughout the manufacturing. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the session. For any query, please send it to info at the rate neosciencehub.com.